Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we come together to celebrate this fifth Sunday of Easter. I welcome you from wherever you are. And I also assure you that the many prayer requests that we have received from you are brought today into this Eucharist. So we pray for your intentions. I invite you too to join us in making the responses wherever you find yourself. And so at the beginning of this Eucharist, as we always do, we come before our God knowing that we are weak and that we are frail. We ask God for mercy, but we also ask the Lord for courage to be witnesses to his good news today. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And let's pray together now our Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists murmured against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the body of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brethren, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. 
And what they said pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands upon them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm. May your merciful love be upon us as we hope in you, O Lord. May your merciful love be upon us as we hope in you, O Lord. Bring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for the upright. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp, with a ten-stringed lute, sing him songs. May your merciful love be upon us, as we hope in you, O Lord. For the word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and his merciful love fills the earth. May your merciful love be upon us, as we hope in you, O Lord. Yes, the Lord's eyes are upon those who fear him, and we hope in his merciful love to rescue their souls from death, to keep him alive in famine. May your your merciful merciful love be upon us us, as we hope in you, you, O O Lord. Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to the Lord, to the living stone, rejected by men in God's sight, chosen and precious. And like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house. To be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices accepted to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and he who believes in him will not be put to shame. And to you, therefore, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the very stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that will make men stumble, a rock that will make them fall. For they stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father by, but by me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. In those days, Jesus said to his disciples, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. 
If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And where I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. Henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we shall be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you do not know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, for many people, Going home means returning to the familiar, a safe place where there is some physical and emotional security. It's a place that we feel anchored. Even for those who don't have houses per se, they often have a picture or an image in their minds of where home is, that familiar place place. It is normally at home that we feel unafraid, where there is a buffer against the realities of a harsh world. In recent weeks across the world, while people have had to stay at home, as the hashtag says, some have not been able to go home to what is familiar. And this has left many feeling insecure and afraid. In today's Gospel, appropriately, Jesus evokes the image of home. He tells his disciples that their hearts should not be troubled because he is preparing a place for them, a home for them. In all the dislocation that we experience, the uncertainty and the confusion, Jesus tells us that he is our anchor. He prepares a place for our hearts. Not only after we die, because this reading is so often used at funerals, but right now too. Jesus is our anchor. Our home of faith, an important place of nourishment in our lives, has also changed drastically in these last few months. And we might find ourselves asking the same inquiring questions as those disciples asked Jesus. Lord, how can we know the way? Lord, show us the Father. Right now, we perhaps are finding it hard to see a way forward. 
We yearn for truth. We want to know what is happening. And maybe we are even asking the question, where is God in 2020? Show us the Father. The account that we hear in the Acts of the Apostles ponders the same questions. A great scandal has occurred in the early church. Favoritism and nepotism and discrimination. The in-group, the Hebrews, have profited at the expense of the Hellenists. They looked after themselves first. Injustice and scandal developed in the early church. And this caused some to be excluded. This caused uncertainty and confusion in the early Christian community. It was no longer a familiar place, a home for everybody. But notice what they do. They come together and they make the necessary change to meet the needs of their time. To ensure that everybody has a place, that everybody feels at home. They listen. And then they think beyond themselves. Notice too how the whole community is involved. The whole household of the church is consulted. The account ends in telling us how well things went for the church after that. The way that the early church follows is the way of Jesus himself. It's the way of justice, development, community building, ensuring that all are taken care of. They are not afraid of change. They all will have a place. And Jesus invites us to ensure today that all have a home. And perhaps this is the way that we are being invited to ponder in this time of isolation, or as some are even calling it, monastery living. The early church has to think beyond themselves. And right now, we need to do the same. Are we, as the church, able to meet the needs of God's people in these times? Are we willing to talk about the changes that may be necessary to make sure that justice and development and the building of a community we all have a home and the number of disciples increase is possible? Are we willing to listen to the whole community. Jesus, who is the way, invites us to ponder these questions that we don't like to ponder. He invites us to ponder our attitudes to the environment, to the homeless, those living in the scandal of squalor, in informal settlements, immigrants, children who are educated in the most appalling conditions, gender-based violence and abuse, racism. All these struggles have been highlighted in this current pandemic. The way Jesus, his attitudes, his actions point us beyond our box thinking to the truth we so often conveniently shy away from or try to even reason or argue away. We cannot. We will not. We must seek another way. Jesus, who is the way and the truth and the life, points us to new horizons, to a vision where all have a place a home in our church and also in our society. 
Are we bold enough to share Jesus' vision? Are we bold enough to labor to make that vision a reality? Lord, show us the Father, Philip says to Jesus. And Jesus says, have I been with you so long and yet you do not know me? To see me too is have seen the Father. Maybe like the disciples of Jesus, we have been around Jesus a long time. We call ourselves believers, and yet we have not really seen him. Like those disciples, we get so wrapped up in our own ideas of God and how God should work or how God doesn't work, that we do not see the way, the truth, and the life. And because we do not see, we get trapped in our world of unjust structures that prevents us from ensuring that everybody has a home. Our limited vision births unjust structures and practices, the exclusion of some, the discrimination and favoritism, an inability to listen and to build the kind of community that Jesus envisions and desires. And then we wonder why our hearts are troubled and we cry out like Philip, show us the Father. The words of Jesus will untrouble our hearts if we choose the way, the truth, and the life. Because that is our true home. That is the familiar place for our hearts. Jesus invites us to prepare a place for everyone, to ensure that all have a home. And so it's an invitation for us to recommit ourselves to believing in him through our actions. We do indeed know the way he has shown us. And this pandemic gives us an opportunity to live the way. Do we choose the way? And so, friends, in this Easter season, I'm going to invite you to renew the promises of your baptism. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with newness of life. Let us now renew the promises of our own baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God as faithfully as we can. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. You believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it, 
through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we now take time to bring our needs before the Lord in our prayers of intercession. Lord our God, we have heard your word. We ask now that you grace us with the ability to live that word as we bring our prayers before you. For the church, that God will guide us in living Christ-like lives by ensuring that all have a place, a home, where they will know the care and love of God for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who serve the poor and destitute, widows, orphans, and the forgotten of the society, that God will renew their hearts and strengthen their spirits to continue to reach out to those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all burdened by worry and anxiety, that they may find hope, freedom, and peace through our words and actions which reveal Christ to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are struggling with addiction at this time, that Christ may be their way to freedom and wholeness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are unemployed or will lose gainful employment at this time, that God will give them courage and help them find support from others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who feel disconnected from the church and don't have online access at this time, that they will know God's presence and care for them. We pray for the priests who cannot minister at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all mothers and those who have shown us a mother's love, that God will watch over them, bless them with every good gift, and fill their hearts with peace on this Mother's Day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are ill, that God will restore them to health and guide researchers in finding effective treatments for the illnesses that burden us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, these are our prayers. We make them in faith through Jesus Christ, your Son and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands, which will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Bless God forever.
let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and for the all of His holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Booty, our Bishop, Duncan, his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Lord, listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. It was Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, who taught us to call God our Father. And so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's take a moment now to pray for peace, peace in our own hearts, in our society, and in our world. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My sisters, my brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. 
His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Graciously, be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Normally on this day, we would, at the end of our Sunday Eucharist, give a special blessing to all the mothers. So I'm going to invite you, if you are with your mother, to maybe stretch out your hand towards her or put your hand on her shoulder. And if you're not, to just hold her in your heart as we now pray for our mothers on this Mother's Day. Lord our God, we thank you for the gift of mothers who so often are our familiar place. They are our home. The people who have provided us with nourishment and security. We pray today for all mothers that you bless them, that you grace them with what they need. And most of all, that you walk with them and protect them. And we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so happy Mother's Day to all mothers. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.